One Academy is the heart of our company. Cryptocurrency is not an easy product. It's a very innovative product based on technology and based on very, very complex concepts. For us to be part of this financial revolution, to be part of cryptocurrency and of a community, we need to understand exactly what we do and what we talk about. And this is why we have the One Academy. The One Academy provides you with concepts, provides you with explanation on cryptocurrency and on the financial world. I would encourage everybody to join the courses, to do the certificates and to understand thoroughly how to use cryptocurrency, what cryptocurrency is and how we can change the world by using cryptocurrency. One Academy. Learn today, lead tomorrow. The One Academy, what it was designed to do is to provide a framework wherein the One Life community is instilled with a blueprint and vision of one point. Now you have to understand this statement because what it is really, it's a blueprint for the unfolding of this whole project. Now, picture this, the one coin is the body, and we have the heart. Dr. Ruja always mentioned that the One Academy is the heart of this whole program. Mm -hmm. And the heart supplies nutrition, blood, um, vitamins, blood, everything, to various aspects of the body. And of course, we have the One Life community. We also have the Deal Shaker community, and of course, the One Forex community. So in all of this, the One Academy gives you what is needed in order for you to understand all three of these different aspects. The mission is simply this, to lift the individual leaders and their teams in terms of their knowledge base of the FinTech industry. And that's very simple. To produce excitement to the community in the elements of learning. Because normally learning, you, you, when you think about learning, you really don't think about excitement. But what the One Academy does is simplify and give you it in a correlated atmosphere where you can now learn easily. To develop the methodology in which this framework will function. Example, face-to-face -face classes, tools and techniques, and Zoom calls like what we are doing right now. And to have this framework duplicated regionally and internationally. So everyone really supposed to be duplicating this framework. How did it all start? It began very simply. It began with a need to have a One Academy discussion. Now the One Academy discussion really was something that was together with the One Academy classes and the One Academy learning. So the discussion, after you learn, we now have a morning discussion on the different aspects of the One Academy financial program. And this was done in 2016 with our then Blue Diamond, Mr. Chester Anderson. But since then, it has morphed into different things. And after that, of course, I went on to really look at Dr. Ruja's book, Learning um, for Profits. And this book in it has certain different points to complement the One Academy financial program. And this ironically was on the same date, two years ago, the 2nd of March at 12 noon. So probably it's prophetic. All right, so coming out of that, of course, the Caribbean decided, listen, seeing that this is the heart, seeing that this is one of the main functions of this whole one point one life situation, we decided to go on a rampant educational program. Therefore, having classes and educating our population. And we did this simply by coming together, having the classes, going through the manuals, and then doing the certification at the end of it. So you'll see here, it has different, different um, countries. So here's Trinidad and Tobago. You'll see all the faces there. Trinidad and Tobago again. All right. So we had different moderators. Of course, we had Larry Pereira, myself, Alvin Morton, um, doing these classes. That was and, level two. And this was, this was actually level two. So what we did, we did level one and level two. And of course, we took it to Barbados. And Barbados did their level one um, on this program, got their certification, and was very happy. So you see that we were doing things. And of course, Suriname followed follow suit and did theirs. 
But we didn't stop there because we realized that the treasure in educating people on finances, um, Dr. Ruja really give us a pathway to get and develop wealth. But something that no one can take away from you after. Okay? So we went on. And of course, we decided to explore the different aspects and we started to have the Forex trading classes. And this here was, was actually designed to help people move in. Just like Dr. Lucia said in her manuals, that trading is that, that process that will help you to move in to the cryptocurrency space and trade when it becomes the norm. So we decided to buy the bullet and introduce this. So we had the one for its introduction classes where people would come, understand what we are doing. And what we did was actually made it simple for people to understand Forex trading because there's a steep learning curve. But we decided if we could do this in just eight simple classes, right, the impact it would have on the community whereby they could earn as well as they earning learning. So it is something that goes tantamount and in line with what Dr. Ruja really had in her mind. All right? So these are up here of some of the classes, and this is a practice session that we usually have every Monday and Tuesday, um, really looking at the markets and analyzing it and really taking trades to see what was the outcome. Incidentally, um, we're going to have in May of this year, mm -hmm. we're going to have a trade-off um, competition. So that trade-off competition, men against women, and we would see what they learned in this period of time when we were doing the classes. And I can't wait for that because it will, they say women make better traders than men, we'll see at this trading forum, all right? So again, we were exploring every angle of the One Academy. And in order for us to understand that we are moving into a digital environment, we decided to do I Am Digital, which is a simple six week course sensitizing people to how to, to really utilize the digital landscape and navigate this Lambert of the digital land, landscape. You know, social media, Google, Facebook, and all these other things. So these are the classes that we have recently started. This is the newest addition to our One Academy whole um, mm -hmm. 40. All right? So you could appreciate the essence of what the One Academy is. Mm -hmm. Now, I would like to just pause here for a minute and say, you know, in listening to Dr. Ruja and listening to her vision, uh, many times we miss a lot of things. But what, in this video, what she's literally saying is that, listen, we are very transparent, regardless of what you hear. And the One Academy attests to that. Um, because it gives you the knowledge needed to make a profitable and intellectual decision on a grand scale. All right? So I would just pause here. I would like you to take a look at this video to see exactly what she had in her mind. Why are you so transparent? Everyone knows where we are or where you are. What are we doing? You said about the auditing, and you find many other companies, currencies, whatever, where nobody really actually knows what it's behind. And what was the reason for you to say, hey guys, I'm here, I'm Dr. Rusha, I have my office here. What was the reason? Why you decided to be so, so open and transparent to everyone? There are two things why, why we decided to do this. First of all, we wanted to, or we are already one of the biggest cryptocurrencies out there. And I believe to become a significant player, um, in the world that we live out there, you have to play by the rules. We are not regulated. Cryptocurrency is not a regulated industry. So all these things that we do currently, um, we impose on ourselves. Okay. So we ask our customers for know your customer um, mm -hmm. guidelines because we want just to be able to trace who is doing transactions in our network. And um, of course, why? I am not hiding because we are not doing anything illegal and the second reason is we are proud actually of what we do. We want to be one of the biggest yeah. cryptocurrencies 
And as a cryptocurrency, for me, most important is how you use the cryptocurrency. We want to do borderless payments. We want to be a payment system and not an investment vehicle. To me, Bitcoin is mostly an investment vehicle where people park money and wait until the value goes up and down. But for me, actually, my vision about cryptocurrencies is to be a very usable tool, something that will help people meet their financial or banking needs. There are two billion people who are unbanked currently in the, in the world. All these people have small banking needs. For example, they send money from A to B, they want to buy things. And I believe that cryptocurrency can meet these needs very, very well. So who do we compete with? And here I, I always try to explain it's not the big banks we compete with. If you want to have a bank account, you go in Sweden, you open a bank account. We compete more with uh, players like Western Union, where a small person goes and sends, let's say, from Singapore 200 euro to his wife to India. This currently you can do in Western Union, you pay very, very high fees, it takes a lot of time, there are a lot of restrictions, and I believe that with cryptocurrency you can do this much faster, much cheaper, and much better. And this was actually the big vision that we had. And now you ask me, why do we do the audit? Well, there are very, very many cryptocurrencies out yes. there, over 400, probably much more, that we don't know about. Most of them are not very liquid, not very big, but it doesn't matter. But a lot of them are decentralized. Now, what does this mean? That there are many, many miners out there who mine the coin, and uh, the blockchain is maintained by these miners. One coin currently is a centralized cryptocurrency. So there are big advantages, but also disadvantages in a centralized system. Uh, the biggest advantage is that, for example, when an account gets hacked, we can help you. So we can retrieve your password, you do not lose your coins. People say out there that uh, about 20% of all Bitcoins mined are lost. Mm -hmm. Just imagine in the beginning one Bitcoin was 10 cents, so you do not pay so much attention to your coins. Now this does not happen in one coin. People can retrieve their password, they can retrieve some transactions if their account was hacked, so we give some kind of protection. But the issue with centralization, of course, is that the company can control the blockchain. And for us, it was important that somebody independent has a look on the blockchain and says, okay, the company is dealing correct with this blockchain. And um, how to say, for every need, for every person, I believe there's the perfect coin out there. We are not perfect for everyone, but I believe that we are perfect for the mass market, for people who want to do cryptocurrency and who want to understand cryptocurrency for all the people who use Facebook, who use Google, but do not understand how Google algorithm works. This is my users. I want to be able to use a phone, but not to know what's inside the phone. Okay. That, that's Boom. And there we have it. Simple, clear, understandable. What are intentions were? All right. So if you notice the heading, intentions can be good, but, and there is a but. But if you understand this video, please type into the chat box, yes. If you fully understand what were her intentions, please type yes right now in the chat box. So go ahead. I really like the fact that she is saying that one life, our cryptocurrency that was created, one coin, is not for everybody. So that means people have choices. But if you understand this vision, which we ask in you all, then if you type yes, you understand it's a simple process. It's about usability, and that's it. We don't need to know how our phones work inside. We just need to say, hello, speak to you, ask a question, get answers when we are having a conversation. Simple. So we don't need to understand the mechanics behind everything. Yeah. And one of the, the main factors is that she found that the cryptocurrency space was too complicated for the average person. So her, her intention was to literally stay transparent, um, stay simple, and provide the service by solving that particular problem. All right? So intentions can be good. But now we have to visit the next slides. We have to actually, as I said, we were going back a little to go forward because there's some things that, must be dealt with and must be um, understood and said, yes, okay, this happened, but. And these things, of course, and it is no, it is no secret of some of the things that appeared, right, by the media and so forth. And these are things that really happened to a lot of companies, many companies, big companies, 
basically go through this. And, you know, it causes them to even be better than they were before. And I think we are in that transition at this point in time. And, you know, I'd like to have a little discussion about this. And in order to do that, um, I would like to invite one of, let's see, stop share. I would like to invite one of our panelists. All right. So I would like to invite Mr. Alvin Morton just to have um, a slight discussion about this particular aspect of um, you know the, the negative that has impacted the, the company and we can't say it hasn't. Yes, it, it has. And what are some of his viewpoints on on this whole aspect of this negative environment? So I would, so Alvin, you can unmute your mic, sir. Hi folks, good afternoon. You're hearing me. All right, yes. So go ahead. Okay, so Ivan, I mean, you know, we talked about this yesterday evening at some length. Yes. The reality is both Dr. Ruja and her brother Constantine have already done, in my humble view, yeoman service and what they needed to do with respect to this sphere and this space. They have provided vision, they have provided values, they have persuaded, they have provided direction, and now it is for us to support, to develop, and to acknowledge. We should be aware of the situation with the CEO of, or the former CEO of Nissan, for instance, Carlos Ghosn. I don't think Nissan has collapsed because their CEO has left or had to, had to resign suddenly. We have Apple. When Apple was going through its challenges, particularly when Steve Jobs was clearly going to be leaving the planet, he made arrangements for Tim Cook to take over as CEO. Coca-Cola had a similar challenge when their CEO passed. And what we need to understand is that companies develop something called a bench strength. And if anyone has read Good to Great by Kim Collins, they talk about, and that book talks about leaders who leave leadership in place that is even stronger than they are. And this is what bench strength is about. And what we are seeing now to me in the One Life community is the same thing. We have leaders in place who have learned a defeat and through the various experiences, real and perceived, of Dr. Ruja and her brother Constantine and are now poised and positioned to provide the next wave and the next level of leadership that the company requires. We are required, in my humble view, to do the same. We are required to build up our skills, our knowledge, and our attitudes. And this is true for any organization. Nissan, Daimler, Benz would have gone through it. The, all the great companies, all the major brands that we have come to know, love, and trust have gone through this process. To me, it is no different with the One Life scenario. It, in, and in fact, we can look at local companies. Clico mm -hmm. continues to function in spite of all that transpired. Absolutely. And I am very certain that it's reborn or its revitalized position will poise and position it to be even stronger than it was before. So I am not in any way, shape or form dismayed by what has happened. Certainly, and even former President Barack Obama talks about progress being uneven. And he is considered to be perhaps one of the more beloved former presidents that exist. And now we see 
resurgence in his vice president. And he is shaking up his own campaign because of gaps in the leadership, gaps in the structure, and ultimately gaps that led to the results. So the, the examples, the disciplines, the various spheres of activity, all to me show the same thing. And that is this. All right. The first, person, the first people, or the first place leadership starts is with ourselves. Yes, absolutely. And, and with that being said, Alvin, I know that you were one of the few people first in when this one, um, one Academy Zoom discussion was first introduced. I would like to just for you to give my little feeling as to why or what was the thoughts then and how it has benefited or where, you, where it has brought you in that line. All right. Thanks, Michelle. So I was one of the first set of presenters doing Zoom calls at six in the morning. It was a challenge. It was difficult. It wasn't always convenient. But where has that gotten me? On Saturday, my plan is to conduct a speech to my club and one of, the sec one of several. And that speech is FinTech, are you ready? In Trinidad and Tobago, the FinTech Association was launched under yes. the umbrella of the TTIFC. We yes. should note that the chairman of the TTIFC is the former managing director of Scotiabank. We should note that one of the directors is a former central bank governor, Ewart Williams. There's a prominent insurance executive in Ines Sinana, who is also the chairman, who is also on the board. Excuse me. When you read their resumes, I don't see anything there that suggests to me that they know what cryptocurrency is. <laughs> All right. I, I hear you. In so, 2017, I sent, did a speech to my club entitled Be Your Own Bank. At that time, anybody who had invested, and I say that word loosely, 40 TT dollars in Bitcoin when it was 10 cents US for one would have, at the time of the speech, had something worth nearly 1 million TT dollars. There were 850 cryptos in, according to coinmarketcap.com at the time. And the, I don't recall the market cap figures. As of February 11th, 2020, there are more than 5,100 cryptocurrencies. The same $40 purchase of Bitcoin at 10 cents would then have been worth nearly $4 million TT dollars. Right. No, there was no... Um, so all in all, you are saying... Go ahead. Yeah, so all in all, you are saying that this one academy, because you are a professional person, all right? Your profession is what by nature? My profession, I'm a trained industrial engineer. I am a certified project management professional, and I currently work in a facilities management company. Okay, so a facilities management company. So having all that knowledge, you are saying that the One Academy, in fact, had a very positive effect, even with all those accolades. Absolutely. All right. So, with that being said, I would like all those in attendance. If the One Academy had that positive effect on you, please type in right now. Yes, it did. And let's move on. Thank you so much, Alvin, for, mm -hmm. for that. Right? Much appreciated. Thank you so much. All right. So let me just share my screen again. Yeah. All right, so, so we're moving on. And, you know, despite all that was said, all that was done, all the negatives, we had two brave soldiers in the form of Cordell King James and Simon Lee. 
stepping up to the plate and saying that, listen, this project has to be completed. So these two gentlemen, and I must say, fine, distinguished gentlemen, stepped up to the plate and say, you know what? We're going to take this company to the next level. Everyone here who says, yes, we can go to the next level, type that into the box as well. So we have Cordell King James and we have Simon Lee basically forming a bridge between corporate and the community to say, listen, we're going to put structure, we're going to put systems, we're going to put whatever is needed in order to make this thing happen. Because the ecosystem of one life is one of the most comprehensive ecosystem there is. And we cannot let it go down. So they decided to do that. And you know what the, the results? Purpose, as they say, is always better when shared. So we started to see a resurgence despite all the negatives because these two gentlemen decided to say, you know what, let go of all that. All the negatives, let it go. Yes, it happened. We acknowledge that it happened. And yes, maybe it needed to happen in order for the company to be shaken and let the foundation be tested to see how strong it is. And we've had that on many occasions. But the resurgence of different things started to happen all over the world. You can see here in, of course, the, the Russian countries. And you can see all over the world, people are joining forces, becoming one, and deciding to make this thing happen. All right? And what we are saying is that they decided to do that. Why? Because they have let go of all the weight that came with all those negative things that happened to the company. And they decided, hey, let's take this thing to the next level. So this video, so I'm wrapping up right now. So let us look at this video and fully understand what it is saying for us to let go, not of the company, but of all the negative things that are associated with it and move on with purpose. Let it go. The things that have happened in the past, the things that aren't happening right now, let it go. If you want to be free, stop locking yourself into the prison of your past. If you want to see the light, stop holding yourself in the darkness of your past. If you really want to move on, release the heavy weight from your back. If you don't want them to win, let it go. Move on and create your best life. You would never allow a thief to enter your home and live there rent free. So why do you allow thoughts that steal your joy to enter and live inside your mind? Let it go. Had a moment of confrontation? Let it go. Don't allow it to live in your mind, stealing the joy from the rest of your day. Someone did you wrong? Let it go. They will ruin more of your life if you allow them to invade your mind like a virus, which will only affect the quality of your life in every other area. The best revenge is always moving on, letting go. Showing your ego is brave enough to let go. Showing you are strong enough to enjoy your life, to live your life fully, regardless of what happens or who isn't doing the right thing by you. Let them have their accidents somewhere else. Life hasn't gone as planned. It doesn't for anyone. Move on. Focus on the good. Those who live amazing lives haven't gotten lucky. When things don't work out, they move on quickly and focus on the next positive. They drop the negative like a hot potato and focus on what they can do today to get in a better state. They don't seek sympathy from family and friends. They focus on what is good in their life and let go of the negatives. Don't cheat on your future with your past. It's over. Commit to your future and it will be a strong, healthy one. If you don't let go of your past, your future will suffer. Understand this very important fact. You are the one who suffers most when you hold on to resentments, when you seek revenge. 
you are the one who wins when you do let go. Richard Carson once said, the key to a good life is this. If you're not going to talk about something during the last hour of your life, don't make it a top priority during your lifetime. Maybe we should all take that advice. Your ego will tell you, once everything is perfect, then I'll be happy. But your soul knows the truth. Be happy, then everything is perfect. No, life circumstances won't be perfect. But if you can get into the right space, you can then get to the understanding that everything happens for a reason and be at peace with that. So be happy. Do whatever it takes to find your happy. Not because everything is good, but because you see the good in everything. Not because every circumstance is a miracle, but because you see the miracle in life itself. Albert Einstein once said, there's only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle, and the other is as though everything is. I know which space I want to live in. What about you? Forgiveness is giving up the hope that the past could be any different. I think for myself, and I know many of you, you think forgiving means accepting what has happened to you. Well, it is accepting that it has happened to you. Not accepting that it was okay for it to happen. It is accepting that it has happened and now what do I do about it? Forgiving is giving up the hope, not holding on, hoping, wishing that it could have been any other way than it actually was. Giving up the hope that the past could be any different. And when I got that, I think it took me to the next level of being a better person because I don't hold grudges for anything or any situation and neither should you. It's letting go so that the past does not hold you prisoner, does not hold you hostage. Yes, that's the story of two monks on a pilgrimage and... So, I would end the video there at letting the past not hold us hostage because our future is so great. And we have to understand that we must know. Sometimes people get comfortable in holding on to things because it gives them purpose. Find a new purpose, but find it in making this project work. And we have so much around us to be thankful for with this company. So let us utilize it. Let us um, accept what has happened, jump over it, and move on. So our One Academy will be the vehicle to make that happen. So we are starting back at the beginning and we are refreshing, we are pressing the reset button, we are rebooting, re Tune retooling in. and resetting. So we are pressing that button today and we are going now to do it the correct way because we have some fantastic leaders, we have the most comprehensive system there is and we have the motivation in our own self to get it done. So with that being said, all right, this week is all about mindset. Um, so tomorrow we'll continue on a different, a different aspect of the mind. And for the whole week, we'll reset your minds to accept what is coming. All right. So with that, I say it's time to go back to the academy. Sorry for the <laughs> back to the one academy <laughs> so we are going back to the academy and restart on our journey to make this thing happen thank you so much Mr. Clifton Chilipse. it's back, back to, to you, you soon and um, we will continue this week resetting mind week for purpose and for reality thank you so much everyone thank you look forward for tomorrow same time bring your lunch and learn with us